what's the problem solving part? What makes that unique? Because I've heard about the character part. You mm -hmm. just described that really well. The problem solving part is really looking at issues in a community and saying rather than this is a individual event, this is a part of a pattern of, of issues that we should be able to solve and if we solve it we should take that whole issue off the table for the community. So SAGA is a problem solving effort for example, stop armed gang assaults. The premise is why do young men kill each other? Okay, that's a that's a problem. We were having, you know, ten homicides a year from that. How, what's the underlying conditions that spawn that? Well, what we figured out was lack of employment, uh, lack of high school diploma, lack of driver's license. There are four or five issues that in, in, a, in a group of young black men, left to their own devices, they will continue to commit mayhem. If you give them those things, they stop. Really? Yeah. So and a simple thing like a driver's license can make that much difference? Because without a driver's license, every time I see you drive down the street, I stop you. And every time I stop you, you get a ticket because you're, you're a gangster. And now you can't pay the ticket, so now you're going to go to the workhouse. And so you can't maintain work because you're in and out of the workhouse, you're in and out of court. Uh, and mainly what you're in and out of court for isn't because of big stuff, it's all this little junk. Like not having a driver's license, not having insurance in your car. That creates an environment where you can't have a normal life. And if you don't have a normal life, and it's like the East Side Boys we're talking about. The East Side Boys have not been involved in a shooting, not so much because they don't still, they, I'm sure a lot of them still have guns. The issue is they have to be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, if you have to be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning, guess what? You're not at a, you're not at a house party at 2 o'clock in the morning getting high. Well, if you're not there at 2 o'clock in the morning, the chances of you getting shot or shot at go down to almost none. So they have a job. Albeit they don't go to parties and they don't go out in places where there's lots of people shooting and they don't have any reason to retaliate now. So it all kind of fits together, but the driver's license is important because they can't get to work if they don't have the driver's license. I mean, we, simple thing like going and getting them a belt. I mean, would you hire a kid who came in holding his pants up but with one hand? No. So we stopped at Sears and got him belts because I want that we were teaching them. Shake hand, look at the person, shake their hand when you come in to ask for the job. You can't do that if you're doing this. It looks <laughs> weird. So, that's, it's simple, but the same thing with domestic violence. We, we stop saying, well, people are just going to squabble. Well, that might be the case, but not every squabble ends up homicidal. Not every squabble ends up with somebody with their hands around their loved one's throat. Okay, can we figure out what causes that? I may not be able to fix everybody that ever has a crossword with everybody, with each other, but can I fix the ones that go homicidal and the ones that go to, to strangulation? Actually, yes we can. And that's how we got down to 33% and that's how we dropped the homicide, domestic homicide rate by 80% was we simply began addressing the problem rather than addressing the, the symptom. I use, like, I, I, when I teach my class, I talk about kind of the medical metaphors. Is, it's a choice. Do you want to deal with the little, you know, little bump on the skin, put a band-aid on it? Or do you want to deal with it, that's a melanoma and there's cancer underneath it. And if you don't dig the cancer out, it's going to, that little blotch will eventually kill the patient. What we used to do in policing is we would just do, we'd put a band-aid on the top of it and say, uh, you know, take an aspirin and go home. And now what we're doing is saying, we need to treat the melanoma underneath it. And if we do that, there should be less crime in our communities. And that's what's happened in Frogtown. We dealt with the, you know, the, the prostitution. We dealt with the, we dealt with the drug dealing. We dealt with the gambling stuff. And for about four or five years, shots fired. We used to have 25 a month in Frogtown. Once we got done with our project, we had about maybe four. I have noticed a difference. I live in Frogtown. So when I first moved there, there was this tension in the feeling. And these days, this is the best place to go out for a restaurant. Right. And, and that's a switch for me. And that the fact that people now feel like they can walk around outside, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a circular process. If you feel like you're so scared you won't go out of the house, you won't know your neighbors. If you don't know your neighbors, then there's no one to look out for you. And when something bad happens, it just reinforces your fear that you're all by yourself. But if you're out of the house talking to your neighbors, going to the local coffee shop, going to get a, going to get a roll or something, you will. people are safer because it's the buddy system. The more good people I have out, but the shots fired. If you if you were hearing shots every night, you're not going to go out. So we had to get rid of the shots in order for people to feel safe to go out. Once they started feeling safe to go out, then we could do movies in the park. Um, and you, you, you have this extraordinary record of how you changed things in St. Paul. 
from what I would perceive as the most unlikely place, St. Paul Police. Uh, I never thought of, say, of police being a change agent, but everybody does think of the legislature as being a change agent. How can you take what you've learned from the St. Paul Police and apply that to what you learned the legislature? What can you make a difference? Well, I think there's a couple places that, that can make the difference. But one of the things is, I'm used to walking into situations where there is conflict, uh, and I'm not. I'm not afraid of conflict, and so for, the, for you know, I, I think I walk in really fully prepared uh, to be able to argue for my case, uh, to argue passionately for my case, and I don't get backed down easily because I've had people try, and it, I've got a I've got a long history of not having that happen very successfully. I've got lots of folks that will tell me why you can't do this and why you shouldn't do that, but if you really do believe in your mission, if you really do believe in your cause, you go in and you fight for it. And I've had a great deal of success, so I know what success looks like, I know what it feels like. The other piece is, I do my homework. Um, my, the other side of my of my life that, you know, that people don't usually talk about is that, that I'm the professor. I am I'm the guy that's been for, you know, for 30, you know, for 20 plus years, been a researcher and a very thoughtful analyst of the social condition. Um, the changes we made didn't happen um, by chance. They happened because we had looked at the facts. We'd looked at domestic violence. We'd looked at immigration. We'd looked at gang violence. We looked at youth crime. We looked at all those things. We tore them apart and then and figured out what would it take to fix those. So I'm going to walk into the legislature fully prepared to have the arguments on the merits. Uh, I can carry the arguments on passion, I can carry the arguments on the merits, I can carry the arguments on, a, on an intellectual level. Um, I'm, I'm somebody that is not easily dissuaded and I'm not easily not easily uh, pushed off with, uh, with rhetoric. So I think I have a, a really good chance. And especially on some of the issues that I think are, are most key to me and most key to the East Side, the violence against women issues, some of the crime issues, some of the youth crime issues, some of the elder abuse issues. I think my 33 years as a cop brings me to the table with a different level of expertise than most of the legislature. I, there's not a part of the east side that I haven't walked. Uh, I have a different sense of what the community is like. I see the community both in its beauty, but I also see the dark side. I, I've also walked the, the alleys of the east side, and I think that's, that's, a, that's a perspective that the legislature doesn't often get. Uh, they oftentimes get the, the analytical clinical reports from the academics. I'm going to bring them both, uh, and I think they're going to have a hard time being able to, to mount arguments that, that will push my arguments off the table.